Ohayou gozaimasu minasan. Hey everyone, happy Friday or ureishi kenyobi for those of you in Japan and thank you so much for watching. Aren't the Japanese some of the most unhappy people in the world? Don't they have the highest suicide rate in the world? Japan is crazy expensive, isn't it? Don't the Japanese eat sushi non-stop? Tokyo is super crowded, isn't it? You guys basically live on top of each other, don't you? I've heard so many misunderstandings and misconceptions about Japan over the years. So in this video, I want to give people some insights into what it's really like to live in Japan by helping to dispel some common misconceptions or misunderstood facts about Japan that I've heard over and over again. Things like, Japanese people eat sushi all the time and think that it's super healthy. Japan is extremely crowded. Japan is super expensive. Whale and dolphin are popular meals in Japan. Japanese girls love foreigners. Japan is very technologically advanced. And Japanese electronic toilets are really complicated to use. Great, now before we jump into it, please don't forget to subscribe or smash that like button or bell to get notifications about my newest videos if you like the content. So first up is the idea that the Japanese people basically survive on sushi, much like Americans survive on pizza or burgers. This is totally untrue. As well, something I found extremely surprising and interesting when I first moved to Japan was the fact that sushi is actually considered an unhealthy or fast food in Japan on the same level as McDonald's. Whereas in the West, sushi enjoys a healthy perception. Myself included. I used to think sushi was a healthy meal, but when I looked into the nutritional facts about sushi, I realized that a normal sushi meal adds up to about three or 4,000 calories. Of course, I normally do eat a ton of sushi when I go, maybe 15 to 20 plates, plus a beer, but I'd say this is relatively normal for Americans and it will easily add up to 3,000 plus calories, which is way more than the average calorie intake you should have for your entire day. Armed with this knowledge, now I will normally order much more sashimi when I eat sushi to make it a bit healthier. Next is the misconception that Tokyo is super crowded, that you are basically ants living on top of each other. Indeed, I also thought this before I moved to Japan, but in fact, I would say most of Tokyo is quite neighborhoody, meaning quiet or relaxed. Of course, there are some super crowded areas, especially transit and shopping districts like Shibuya, Shinjuku, or Ikebukuro. But I would say most of Tokyo is low-key and quiet, with more of a Brooklyn feel instead of a 24-7 crazy busy Manhattan vibe. You can often stroll along river and tree-lined streets where there's quaint sidewalk cafes where you can stop to have a coffee. Daikanyama and Nakameguro are very much like this, except during Sakura, when Nakameguro becomes super crowded because it is one of the most popular spots in Tokyo for cherry blossom viewing. The next misconception is actually a question I would get quite often, which was asking whether the Japanese were unhappy people or not. This would often be accompanied by something like, don't they have one of the highest suicide rates in the world? Well, the quick answer is absolutely not. One of the things that struck me about Japan when I first arrived was how happy everyone was. Riding the subway was a delight because it would often have loads of school kids dressed up in perfectly pressed uniforms and leather backpacks having an absolute blast with each other. In fact, because Tokyo is so safe, you can often see kids as young as four or five riding the subway by themselves. If they get lost, they know that they can simply ask a stranger for help who will promptly make sure the child is headed in the right direction. Would you let your preschool child ride the subway alone in London, New York, or Paris? I certainly wouldn't. As well, you can often find groups of teenage girls and guys in the park or in cafes joking and laughing together compared to the all too common teenage angst that you would find in America. Todd, come on in. You must be joking. I wouldn't kill you. We play some competitive sports once in a while, would it? Oh, would that make you love me? <sighs> Jesus. It seemed like the young Japanese were always smiling or in a good mood. As well, when you look at the rankings from the WHO for the highest suicide rates by country, Japan ranks 30th. The next misconception that I hear often that does have some truth to it, but in the end I would say is false, is that Japan is some high-tech space-age society that visiting Japan is like walking into the future. While there are some high-tech elements to Japanese society, like Pepper, who is a ubiquitous customer service robot that you will find everywhere, or maybe that you saw in the headlines a few years ago when the world's first robot restaurant opened in Japan, or how about those electric toilets that they have. But actually, I would say that most of Japan feels like it's stuck in the 1980s. Indeed, surprisingly, all of the cities have the same architecture, which again seems like it hasn't been renovated or improved since the Japanese bubble burst at the end of the 1980s. For those of you who don't know, there was a time in the 1980s when everyone was worried about Japan taking over the world much like people feel about China today. 
Japan's products and services were the most advanced. They were buying up some of the most iconic buildings in New York City. And Tokyo had the most expensive real estate in the world. I've even heard stories of where you couldn't get a taxi at rush hour without waving an Ichiman bill, which is worth about $100, to get the taxi driver's attention. Then in 1991, the music stopped and Japan had a massive stock market and real estate bubble crash. When you travel around Japan today, all the cities feel the same. From Fukuoka to Hiroshima, Osaka, Nagasaki, and Sapporo, they all have the same architecture as well as the same look and feel. It's almost like time just stopped and nothing has changed for decades. Tokyo would be the exception to this though. Most of the city, especially Shibuya, has enjoyed a fantastic facelift with the run-up to the Tokyo 2020 Olympics, which was postponed until 2021. There are new fantastic buildings like Shibuya Scramble Square, Shibuya Stream, Shibuya Parko, and Miyashita Park. Outside of this architectural fact, many other elements of Japan are stuck in the Stone Ages, I would say with some of the most obvious ones being anything related to governmental services, like driver's license, immigration services, or taxes, but also real estate and corporate banking services are quite archaic. There could be a whole other video to explain why this happens, but let's just say that Japan's predilection for paperwork and stamps, known as the hanko, is next level. There are also dizzying levels of approval needed to get anything done in corporate Japan, often with departments not being able to explain why the process is so laborious or will even take weeks to get finished. The next misconception happens to also be one of the greatest things ever about Japan, and that is that Japanese electric toilets are really complicated to use. There's a few companies, but Toto is by far the biggest and most famous, so I'll focus on them for this video. Honestly, it took me six or seven months to actually try a Toto, but man was it life changing when I did. I guess my Puritan American roots were too uncomfortable with the thought of water shooting up my butt. But now, if I don't use a Toto, it's hard for me not to feel unclean. I mean, would you take a shower without water and clean yourself just with paper towels and feel clean afterwards? While it is true that there's tons of buttons and features on a Toto toilet, you really only need to use a couple. And after a few uses, it is quite obvious how to use it. Just make sure you have the water temperature set for the right time of the year because there's nothing like a cold water stream hitting your naked butt in winter to wake you up in the morning. Okay, moving on from the bathroom, the next misconception I hear is that it's impossible to live in Japan without speaking Japanese. While it is true that Japan has a low level of English proficiency, my Japanese is horrible, and I was still able to start a company and live in Japan comfortably for six years with little problems. Google Maps and Google Translate will literally be your best friends, but as well, the subway and roads all have signs in English. Often restaurants will either have an English menu, something I'm a pro at asking for, or it will have photos on the menu. Admittedly, I did use a lot of body language to get my points across, but with a smile and some basic everyday Japanese, you will be able to get along quite well living in Tokyo without being fluent in Japanese. Next up is something I touched upon in one of my other videos about dating in Japan, which is that Japanese girls love foreigners. If you want the whole story about this, please check out that video, but the quick answer is this is false. In fact, from my experience, I would say it's actually harder in Japan as a foreigner because often you are labeled as a player. So expect most of the beautiful Japanese girls you see in Japan to actually be less interested in you, unless of course your Japanese is kanpeki. Moving on to the one that I hear most, which is that Japan is super expensive. Contrary to popular belief, Tokyo I would say is extremely affordable. It is easily not even half, but one third the cost of other major global cities like New York, London, or Paris. Restaurants are delicious and have plenty of options for less than $10. As well, alcohol is quite cheap. Beers are often around 3 to 500 yen or 3 to 4 dollars. This means that you can have a more social life, frequently meet up with friends after work or on the weekends, instead of cooking from home, which is what I used to do when I lived in other major cities. Finally, I'll finish up with a couple food misconceptions. First, Japanese people often eat whale or dolphin. I can honestly say in my entire time in Japan, I never saw anyone order or eat these meats. That being said, there was a whale meat restaurant in my neighborhood in Shibuya, but it went out of business after a few years. The most dangerous fish that is quite popular in Japan though is blowfish restaurants, which is called fugu in Japanese. Fugu fish is a delicacy in Japan and is 1200 times more poisonous than cyanide. So if it's prepared wrong, things can turn out quite bad for you. In fact, it is estimated that each year in Japan, there are several cases of poisoning courtesy of fugu fish. Although from my research, it seems that over 90% of these are at home with people trying to prepare it for themselves. For this reason though, it normally takes chefs up to 10 years to properly learn how to prepare fugu meals. It isn't cheap either, with meals normally starting at about 
15,000 yen or around $120. Just so you know, I did try it once, but didn't find it that tasty. So I would suggest that you stick with the less poisonous fish options in Japan. The final misconception has to do with beef, specifically Kobe beef, and whether it is the best quality beef in Japan, which I would say is absolutely false. But a disclaimer here that this is largely subjective. Personally, I prefer a much leaner cut of beef like a tenderloin or a sirloin. But the Japanese prefer a much more marbly cut of beef because they believe the fat gives it more flavor. Now this may be true, but the problem with Kobe is that it's super fatty, to the point where it tastes like butter, which is simply too fatty for me. For this reason, I would say a good lean cut of Wagyu is the best beef in Japan. Not to mention that Wagyu will be much easier in your wallet because Kobe steaks normally start at around three or four hundred dollars. Well, that's it for now, and thank you again for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe, and if you like the video, please leave a thumbs up to keep the YouTube gods happy. See you next week.